Hi guys, Shaka here. So we are reviewing the the two remaining classes um, for Scholarman's Academy, and that is Shaman and uh, Warrior. And as I mentioned previously in some of the earlier videos, uh, these are uh, we've reviewed a lot of the dual class cards. There's been stuff that we reviewed over the course of the release period and stuff like that. So there's not going to be all that many cards in this review, but man, they're powerful. Let's have a look on what they actually look like. The first one we have is called Rune Dagger, which is a two cost weapon uh, for a shaman. So we're going through the shaman cards first. And it states, it's a 1-3 weapon, so 1 damage and 3 durability, and after your hero attacks, gain spell damage plus 1 this turn. Uh, and uh, I think this is probably going to be the the weakest one of the, one of the different cards that we are going to be evaluating over the course of this uh, card review uh, video, and uh, it's still quite good. Um, the challenge could be which kind of deck does this actually fit into? Uh, I like a spell damage shaman. Is, going, is it going to be aggressive? Is it going to be something that you use in a control deck in order to do lots of like a um, earthquake or something that uh, like a life steal spell that does a lot of uh, does a lot of die life steal because it's a spell damage plus one. All this kind of stuff. Um, it can maybe fit in both, and it, it needs some support for this to happen. It needs to be a bunch of spells, but I do think that the Shaman class might have enough that we will see Rune Dagger be included, um, and, and perhaps even viably run uh, in, uh, in certain Shaman decks. So uh, that's a good chance. I give it three stars, and it's a good chance it will see play in Constructed. Uh, for Arena, uh, weapons are always good, and uh, having a spell damage effect when there's a bunch of more spells being released, just having that additional swing, um, that additional plus one spell damage which will allow AoE uh, spells to just clear a little bit more, or what single target removal, just take out that uh, minion that is just a little bit bigger. Or maybe you'll be able to push for lethal together with clearing whatever on the board. So there's a really a lot of uh, usability in arena for a card like this, um, and and just having that extra chip damage that you can finish off minions or uh, whatever might be the use case. So even though you do not even get the spell damage off, it's still going to be quite a good card for arena. The next card, we are already heading up that spell damage road, and it's a 3 mana spell uh, called Molten Blast. And it deals 2 damage, so if, for instance you have the card from before, um, your rune dagger, then it will be a 3 damage. 3 mana, 3 damage spell, which can go face, importantly enough, but you can also target minions of course, you can target whatever, it just deals damage. And however many damage this spell deals, so also in you include the spell damage uh, effects. It summons that many 1-1 one, one elementals. So there's a summon side to it and also a damage side. And just summing up the stats, so if it's just there's, there's no other stats, like 1-1 one, one, uh, elementals, uh, two of them would probably be worth a mana. And then you have your two damage, which you can target anything with. So it's a very solid 2 mana spell which deals 2 damage, which is usually 1 mana, and another mana for the 1-1 one, one elementals, and 1 additional mana to combine them. But the upside really makes this into a strong card. Um, so I rated 4 stars because there is a token possibility for whether it's a totem or token. This is actually one of the ways that Shaman would want to play, um, and therefore it could find a deck uh, that is this that can actually be used in. It's probably going to be in an aggressive deck and not a control deck, uh, but then that is an archetype which could suit Shaman quite well. So I rate it 4 stars because it does different things all together, and, and that is really powerful. Um, and for Arena, 
like this is completely nuts even though you don't get the spell damage off you remove stuff even though it might be small stuff and you develop a board perfect that's all you want in an arena so all these things combined even though the card in itself doesn't do a crazy thing it is only three mana and it does enough for that mana cost um it's a definitely worth picking a very powerful arena card and you're going to be seeing it a lot it's only a rare card Next, we have a really expensive spell for Shaman, and it's an 8 mana card called uh, Tidal Wave, and it has lifesteal, and it deals 3 damage to all minions, both yours and your opponents. Uh, so it's, it's a really expensive card, it's the only thing you'll be doing in a single turn, uh, and that's fine for Constructed, it'll go in some kind of control deck and getting to turn 8 and having this effect uh, where you, uh, you're you under pressure from the aggressive player, they have a full board of stuff and, and your next turn you're probably, or you may die, you clear the board, you heal back to 4 and your opponent concedes. That's a game plan, huh? Uh, so in control decks, Tidal Wave will see play. Of course, if you're the aggressive player, you wouldn't put this in an aggressive Naturally, you wouldn't put this in an aggressive um, uh, shaman deck. So it it is a little bit narrow in a, narrower in its usability. But when you do want to use this, I think this is definitely at least one you'll include one of because it has such a powerful effect and it wrecks havoc to the aggressive players. Um, so control shaman if it's viable, it is definitely something that'll be included. And I rate it five stars for constructed because. Um, this will definitely uh, um, hurt the aggressive deck so much and lets you stabilize. A really, really powerful card. For Arena, uh, I do rate it high because you might be in a really awkward spot, uh, but it is not just like an auto 5 stars because this is the only thing, thing you'll be doing. Uh, so if your opponent is in a top deck situation, yes, Tidal Wave is great because it clears the board and your opponent can only draw one card per turn. But you clear the board or does an you do an effect on the board. You can manipulate a little bit so maybe you have some minions left over. But still, it is not you're not developing the board and that's why it's not a pure 5-star card for, for, uh, for Arena. Uh, Hack you stuff where you cleared the board and you spawned this bunch of stuff on your side that would be a five star card this is good it's not horrible in any way shape or form but it has a narrower use case for the arena okay this next one is completely nuts uh, it's the legendary for shaman instructor fireheart it's a three mana three three cheap minion, although the vanilla stats is kind of, it's there, but it's not great. But it, she has the battle cry saying, you discover a spell that costs one or more, meaning that you can't have zero cost spells, but also you could just be chaining a, a bunch of spells there, so it, it, it's fair enough. But you can, uh, whenever you discover a spell, if you play that spell, it lets you discover another spell. <laughs> the upside for this is completely nuts. Um, and, and the last spell that you can't afford to play, well, you just keep that. So you choose the very, at the very end, you can just choose a spell that is costly or you need it somehow to stabilize or whatever might be, board clear, uh, um, whatever might be the case. And then you have a very strong spell for the next turn. Um, that, that this one is so powerful. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to play this. This I think this can go if, even in aggressive decks or in control decks. Th this has to suit each and every mm, thinkable way that you can come up with. Also because the range of spells that Shaman has is immense. I, I don't see any deck that you for Shaman that you wouldn't want to put Instructor Fireheart into. <laughs> and that makes it a pure 5-star card. Um, 
it might be that the you know amount of spells that I have kind of miscalculated that a little bit, and you'll be offered some spells which kind of suck or is not useful in any way. But but not off the top of my mind, Instructor Fireheart is going to be really great and has uh, she will have such a powerful effect on the game board and and the game in general for Shaman. Really powerful five star card for constructed and just trying to imagine this if you look towards the arena. Just having this one card then, well, here you, here you go, here I have the spellbook, you can choose whatever you want. I know that's kind of, uh, you discover a spell, you're not just flipping through a collection, just picking one out, but having a discover effect that with the amount of spells that Shaman has available, that you need to find, well, I need to find a spell that does something specifically. There's a high chance that you might get something that actually works. And if you do find, uh, if you do not find like the, the mid range spell that you want, or for instance, you're looking for a hex, just choose the cheaper one. Play that one, you get another reroll. Uh, definitely powerful. Spells are so powerful in Arena, and you have this instant battery for the one turn that you play Instructor Fireheart that you can just discover a bunch of spells. That is completely crazy and such a powerful effect. Uh, so, so in my mind, easy five stars in both game modes. All right, <clears throat> the first one we have is uh, as the studies card for uh, Warrior. And it's called Athletic Studies, and it's let, it lets you discover a Rush Minion, and the next Rush Minion will cost one less. Uh, rush Minions for Warrior are so powerful right now. Uh, you have your legendary Rush Minion, um, what is that called? Uh, it's the 4 mana 4 4 which lets you shuffle in a prime. You have your Restless Mummies, you have your uh, uh, Rush Dragons, you have, uh, I think there's so many. When I was looking through the amount of Rush Minions in the Neutral and the Warrior Pool, I was thinking to myself, self, wow, having this additional effect um, available in almost any kind of uh, Warrior deck, whether it is a a uh, control deck, or it's a uh, someone, somewhat more mid range or aggressive deck uh, that really seems like a powerful effect. Um, and, and that mainly goes to the focus around which Rush Minions that we're actually talking about that Warrior has access to. Um, the powerful, I think, will be included, uh, even though I say many times with the studies cards. Just include the, the one that you want, but this lets you screw up something or, or change some things. Like you can get two legendaries and stuff like that. I, I think this actually um, is good enough that you will choose a rush minion which suits the turn that you're in. There are some really different mechanics of the minions with rush. Uh, let lets you choose and dictate some specific things, and and therefore I think this is actually something that could be run in a viable deck. For arena, rush minions are so powerful. Uh, you can't choose which you you can't choose the deck that you you have, but, but having a generator card like this, where you generate a card which has an instant board effect, that is so powerful. Uh, so easy five stars in the arena for me. Uh, I will definitely pick this one in uh, in wire drafts when when I get them offered, uh, unless they're up against some other really crazy cards. But but so powerful. Rush is such a powerful mechanic in the arena. Then we have a two mana spell called Information uh, for wire. And uh, the spell adds to random taunt minions to your hand. It's a random effect, so it's probably not going to be seeing that much um, uh, play in constructors. The only upside is that when it's random, it actually also violates, so to speak, the lead class constriction behind uh, uh, Discover. So it is really random taunts. You can get it from whatever class. 
uh, but investing two mana in getting something that could also be really crap like a silverback patriot like a three mana one four taunt um, that's probably not something that you aim to do in viable meta decks uh, so it might be run it's a good option it's a cheap option for um, uh, budget decks and stuff like that where you want to revolve around some kind of control or survival strategy so it's great that it's there uh, but I would only rate it two stars uh, if we look at it from a viable deck construction point of view. For Arena, it's a little bit more powerful. It's not something that you want to do on two. You want to affect the board right away. But but it's actually a high value card there, even though it's random and random is not. Like I mentioned it could be silverback Praetor that you get. It might be something that is a little bit skewed in mana, so you can't really play them and all this kind of stuff. But generally card generation like this in in arena is better and i rated three stars it's not something you be going to be something that you're completely sad about uh, getting in your arena draft it is going to be a fine card it's just not going to be it's, it's a value card you have to be mindful of that it's not going to be doing anything on the turn that you play it but a fine arena card and the final card for this uh, review, it's going to be a short one for uh, uh, Warrior. It's a 4 mana weapon with 4 attack and 2 durability. Reaper's Scythe. Uh, it has a spell burst effect. Uh, so whenever you have this equipped and you play a spell, you do a... Um, what's that called? That's why it's called... Uh, um, Oh, can't remember the term for it, uh, but you damage whenever you hit something. The one one middle minion, for instance, you also deal the same damage on the ones on the side of the one that you attacked. So essentially, with a spellburst effect, you deal twelve damage to your opponent's board with one swing. Uh, so it's kind of like a miniature AOE. And control decks uh, on turn four, five ish, when we can get the sp uh, spell burst off, uh, that's a powerful effect. And uh, you have it's something that is more easily, uh, it's easier to have a weapon lingering on your uh, on your hero than it is to have a minion lingering with spell burst because that's going to be a priority target. And of course, you have ooze and. Uh, other weapon removal effects, but but that is a um, um, maybe a one-off uh, like uh, in in your opponent's decks. And some decks just even have room for uh, weapon removal uh, because the deck lists are to so tight. Uh, there's no room for any additional cards. Um, and it, when you're up against opponents like that. Reaper Skies is definitely going to do some work. Uh, it's, power, it's powerful enough that you could see this in some kind of aggressive deck, but I do think that the better suit for it is within a uh, warrior control archetype or mid range or something like that. As you control your early stage of the game and then you do some powerful turns towards the later uh, later parts. And, and I think that suits that game plan just fine. So definitely a four-star card for uh, for constructed and for arena weapons are powerful. You're not guaranteed to get spells or have spells in hand, so you can actually activate this. And that's why I don't rate it five stars just straight up. Uh, when you do have the deck for it, you do have a bunch of spells. It it goes up in value immensely. Uh, but you almost always want to pick the reaper uh, the reaper sky. Th um, in the arena, it's it's such a powerful card, dealing eight damage over the course of two turns, and potentially even doing like a miniature board clear. Uh, that is a powerful arena card. Um, so also four stars for arena. All right, guys, that sums up part ten of the card review. The only thing we have left is uh, the neutrals, and that's going to be a long one. But we'll rush on through it, so stay tuned for the next one, where you will get the, uh, the finishing part of uh, Scholarman's Academy, where I will run through the remaining cards that I haven't reviewed 
from the neutrals in the set.